So, hello and welcome to uh, Casa Fortes at uh, isa na namang episode ng uh, History by Bike. So, uh, medyo maulan na naman ngayon. So, dito lang muna tayo gagawa ng uh, uh, video. So, ang uh, magiging topic natin uh, para sa episode na to is yung mga China Clippers. So, itong mga China Clippers ay yung mga Trans-Pacific uh, seaplanes na ginagamit noon para sa uh, commercial transport sa mga passengers at sa mail uh, ginagamit siya. So, ang route nito is galing siya from San Francisco sa US at uh, uh, tatago siya sa Pacific Ocean sa ilang mga islands doon at diretso dito sa atin pero ang last uh, stop niya is sa may Hong Kong so uh, ito yung magiging episode natin ngayon for history by bike so uh, stay tuned at ito na yung video the greatest air transport flight the China Clipper after 60 hours of flying time over the Pacific and there's Manila she's crammed with air mail Letters that have flown the giant of oceans are treasure for stamp collectors. But what about this film? It flew the return flight 8,000 miles, then 3,000 miles across this continent. As the China Clipper lands, President Quezon is the new chief of the new Philippine Republic. The film of his inauguration was shipped by boat two weeks before this one was made. The inauguration picture is still on the ocean, while this later one is on the screen. A revolution in transportation. It's welcomed as the first great event for the independent Philippines. President Quezon sees a new tie with the United States as older ties are severed. And Captain Edwin Music delivers a letter to the President. Mr. President, we are particularly honored to present to you this air mail letter. It's from our President, the Honorable Franklin D. Roosevelt. Captain Music, I'm highly honored to receive this letter from the President. I want to congratulate you Captain Music, a new gentleman for your successful flight. New nation, new... Clipper completes Epical Hop, the Tribune, November 30, 1935. Lands at 3.30 p.m. Last leg of Trans-Pacific flight negotiated in 11 hours, 22 minutes. Manila and its population of 400,000 yesterday afternoon witnessed the making of aviation history as the giant China clipper of the Pan American Airway System successfully crossed the vast expanse of the Pacific and landed gracefully in Manila Bay at exactly 3 o'clock, thus inaugurating the Trans-Pacific Air Mail Service between the United States and the Philippines. Huge crowd on hand. The huge metal bird flying a straight route from Guam to Manila hit her toe unexplored, negotiated the distance in 11 hours and 32 minutes. The ship, the largest ever built in America and the third largest seaplane in the world, was accorded the most enthusiastic welcome this city is capable of extending. A crowd estimated at 100,000 was on hand to witness the epical event. The plane slows down. The last leg of the Trans-Pacific crossing, Captain Edwin C. Music, commander of the China Clipper, said was uneventful. The plane averaged 140 miles an hour during the first half of the Guam-Manila flight, but had to slow down the rest of the way in order not to arrive in Manila ahead of schedule. The clipper hit Manila at an altitude of 10,000 feet. The ship was so high in the air that no one saw it approaching. Captain Music said the plane circled once around Manila at that altitude and on circling the second time, lowered to an altitude of about 7,000 feet. First sighted at 2.59, 
At that altitude, the clipper was first sighted at 2.59 p.m. by thousands who were in the bay on every conceivable watercraft and on land to the south of the Manila Bay. The sight of the white metal seagull glimmering in the sun high in the air, its gigantic proportions made more apparent by a swarm of tiny escorts composed of planes of the United States Navy, Army and Navy thrilled the city's population. The China Clipper with Captain Music and R.O.D. Sullivan, first officer, at the controls circled at least 10 times over Manila for half an hour before it landed. The 400,000 people in the city did not let pass the opportunity of seeing the deluxe airliner during that half hour period as it flew over Manila. On the streets, rooftops, and windows, parks and plazas, people craned their necks as they looked skyward, following the progress of the flight over the city and the suburbs. In many sections of Manila, traffic stood still as motorists and cocheros stopped for a good look at the ship. In the Manila Bay, all merchant vessels and warships and launches were in gala attire for the occasion. Packed with people from all walks of life, these ships crowded into the space around the barge where the plane was to moor. As the plane was sighted, all the ships blew their whistles in a long blast of welcome. Subsequently, all whistles blew again when the clipper made a perfect landing at 3.30. Shortly before landing, the clipper flew low towards Ermita and gradually flew lower as it returned to the bay by way of the Manila Hotel. It struck the sea with very little splash of water and taxied on the water about 200 meters before it stopped. Followed closely by launches and speedboats, the clipper retraced its route towards the barge. It took the plane about 15 minutes to moor and it was 3.45 p.m. before it was tied fast to its moorings. Five more minutes passed before officers of the local United States Quarantine Office boarded the clipper. After the inspection, Captain Music and the six other members of the crew boarded the quarantine launch, which took them to Admiral Landing at 4.05 for the reception. As Captain Music disembarked from the launch, he and his fellow aviators were welcomed with applause and shouts of mabuhay. Antonio de las Alas, Secretary of Public Works and Communications, and Vice President Sergio Osmeña headed the welcoming committee, which included Major J.E.H. Steve Knott that greeted the daring airmen at the Admiral Landing. The visiting flyers were then escorted to the ceremonial grounds, stopping under a beautifully decorated arch. The crowd, the largest ever gathered to view the ship since its epoch-making flight, stood at attention as the band played the national anthems. Welcoming the aviators in the name of the country, Secretary de las Alas spoke as follows. The wide span of the Pacific Ocean was first crossed by Ferdinand Magellan, the discoverer of the Philippines, and it took him about three months and a half to do so. Three decades ago, I had the pleasure of going to the United States and our trip then lasted fully 31 days. In recent years, they have been able to shorten the duration of the journey to 17 days only. All of us hailed such rapid trips as a great achievement, as a distinct and noteworthy landmark of progress. Today, we are gathered here to witness an epochal event, a feat which we might have refused to believe if we had not seen it with our own eyes, a fact which never entered our mind even our most fantastic dreams a few years ago. The American people have every reason to feel proud and joyful today. To them, the arrival here of the China Clipper means the perfection of an important invention, the aeroplane, 
the complete conquest and subjugation of the air. The adoption of the fastest means of transportation and communication which is bound to revolutionize travel and commerce. To us, Filipinos, this event signifies much more than all these. It thrills our hearts more than can be imagined, inasmuch as it means that here after the Philippines can no longer be considered as located in an isolated sector of the world, and that America will have more opportunity to get in touch and acquainted with the affairs of our country. The handicap in our previous relations with America has been the isolation of the Philippines. The fact that not much was known by the great bulk of the American people about the sentiments and needs of our people and the conditions prevailing in this country. The establishment of regular airplane service between the United States and the Philippines will, I am sure, bring us closer to one another and usher in an era of mutual understanding and goodwill. It will undoubtedly help us in solving the vital pressing problems of what the commercial relations between the two countries should be. I desire to take this opportunity to congratulate the officials, officials of the Pan American Airways for this great achievement. It was all due to their sparing no efforts to make this trip a reality. And to you, Captain Music, and to your companions, we desire to extend our most hearty welcome and also to express our deep admiration for your indomitable will, pioneering spirit, and unequaled valor. Mayor Juan Posadas then gave Captain Music the key to the city. In giving the key, the mayor said, Commander Music and the crew of the China Clipper, I am glad of this opportunity of extending to you the cordial greetings and hearty welcome of the city of Manila. It is with deep feeling of emotion and anxiety that we awaited your safe arrival, and now that you have successfully inaugurated the Trans-Pacific Air Service of the Pan American Airways, we rejoice in your achievement and take this occasion to express our confidence that the establishment of this air service will bring not only material prosperity to the people of the Philippines, but also peace and goodwill to all the nations in the Far East. Gentlemen, it is with the greatest of pleasure, therefore, that I am presenting to you the symbolic key of the city. May I ask that you receive it as a token of our appreciation and gratitude and as an assurance that Manila will always receive you and the clippers of the Pan American Airways with open arms. Captain Music responded with a brief speech which is printed elsewhere in this issue. Several newsreel cameramen were at the scene to shoot pictures of the Clippers' arrival and of the welcoming ceremonies. Juan Ruiz, director of posts, canceled the letter which President Franklin D. Roosevelt wrote Manuel, President Manuel L. Quezon. The ceremonies over, the flyers were taken to their automobiles. As the aviators left the enclosure at the Ad Admiral Landing for the cars, crowds eager to get a look at the birdmen and to shake their hands battled with a handful of policemen. The route to Malacanang Palace through the Ayala Bridge had been opened through arrangements made by Major Steve Knott. Arriving at the palace, Captain Music and his companions paid their respects to President Quezon. Captain Music personally delivered to President Quezon the letter from President Roosevelt. President Quezon read the letter and then delivered a brief speech acknowledging it. Newsreel pictures were taken of President Quezon with the flyers at the palace gardens. At the invitation of the president, the flyers went up the palace and stayed there for about 20 minutes. The aviators were taken to the Manila Hotel, where they will stay in Manila. President Quezon will be host at a luncheon at Malacanang in honor of the airmen at noon today. After a restful night's sleep, off early the next morning from Manila, capital of the Philippine Islands. Manila is 1,600 miles from Guam, 
the Clipper is now closing in on the final leg of Pan Am's Pacific Conquest. Pan Am's Clipper base in the Philippine Islands was at the old U.S. Marine Corps flying base at Cavite, about eight miles south of the capital of Manila. Passengers stayed at the luxurious Manila Hotel. As usual, there was plenty for passengers to see in and around Manila, from floating cities to exotic foods and a fascinating culture that existed unspoiled for centuries. the final leg of Pan Am's Pacific Conquest, Hong Kong, the gateway to the Orient. Hong Kong is 546 miles from Manila. Clipper's Hong Kong base was at Kai Tak, located on the Kowloon side of Victoria Harbor. This was the front door to China. Hong Kong, a British crown colony, was the business mecca of the Orient. It's where Pan Am passengers first saw the traditions and customs of one of the world's oldest civilizations. So may papakita ako dito ng mga ilang pang pictures ng uh, China Clipper. Pero it, itong particular na seaplane na to is yung type niya is yung M130 ng uh, Martin Company. So itong uh, uh, particular Clipper na to ay pinangalanan siyang The Philippine Clipper. So meron siyang serial na NC14715. So, yan ang isa sa mga uh, clippers na ginagamit din ng uh, Pan American Airways. Uh, bukod sa kanya, meron din yung uh, China Clipper, uh, Hawaii Clipper. Tapos, andito rin yung uh, route ng uh, mga clippers. So, from uh, California, uh, pupunta siya ng uh, Hawaiian Islands. Tapos sa Midway Island, Wake Island, Guam. Tapos sa uh, Manila, sa atin, sa Philippine Islands. Kung tawagin nila noon, ng mga Amerikano. And then, last uh, stop niya is uh, Hong Kong. At meron din ditong uh, map kung saan uh, pinapakita nagla-landing yung mga clippers dito sa Manila Bay. So... Uh, malapit siya sa Pier 7, sa may South Harbor yan. 
So, pag uh, tigil niya doon, merong barge na nagaantay sa kanya, tapos merong mga boats na magdadala naman doon sa may Admiral Landing. So, dito na lang natin tatapusin yung uh, episode natin ngayon for History by Bike. So, sana nagustuhan yung topic natin, yung mga China Clippers ng uh, Pan American Airways. At uh, this is History by Bike. Uh, pakilike, pakishare, pakisubscribe yung channel. And uh, I'm signing off from uh, Casa Fortes. So, uh, thank you.